Welcome to SelfDiscoveryWisdom.com, formerly known as Self Discovery Media. On these podcasts, you're going to hear people who speak from the heart. They've taken the journey in life. Many things have happened to them, but they've changed it to happening for them. And in their strength, their courage, they've discovered their abilities and their wisdom, and they are now sharing it here with you. Do enjoy each show. We bring it to you with love and knowing that it's going to help you on your journey of life. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Sarah's View of Life, right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy. Well, I've just received one of the biggest gifts that you can ever get, apart from giving birth to your children, which is a gift of love from God. But my children, my daughter and her husband, have bought me a home, a home to move into very, very close to them so I can be near my grandchildren and help out. I am very, very excited about this and very honored. It is something I've had, as you know, I talk about the balls up in the air waiting to, to land. And I know I knew I was going to move. Um, I didn't know when I was going to move, where I was going to move to, how I was going to do it. And bless their hearts and souls uh, they have bought this place for me to live in and uh, it's very very roomy um and it's it's actually um, a trailer home that is over a thousand square feet with land and a and a deck in a nice community that's very small and intimate uh, back uh, at the back just all green land and apparently the deer come and see you and so and i am 10 minutes away from where she is four minutes away from daycare and five minutes away from downtown. So um, I am moving to Nanaimo and I am um, looking very much forward to it. It will be 43 years since I have lived on my own. That's an awful long time. Every time I go to my son's where I'm looking after the cat and dog while they're away, I'm on my own and I realize how much I enjoy it. I have had a wonderful time here for the last five and a half years living with my daily darling Audrey, who turns 91 this year. But it was time for me to move on. She's not happy about it. And so now I have to find somebody to replace me um, that she can have as a companion, not just as a cohabitor. And uh, hopefully the gods will be kind and help me find that right person for her. But life does move on. I'm hoping for me it's the last move. I've had hundreds of moves in several countries. And I really hope that this is the last one and I can just settle down and use my energy to branch off into all the books and the podcasts and the children and everything else. Um, but it is quite extraordinary that this is happening and I am really, really, really excited. But, you know, now comes the actual packing part. If you saw what was around me, you would be astounded. I probably have one tiny little square foot of space. So to actually pack stuff and stack it, I have nowhere to put it. So I'm going to have to work this out. It might have to be mad packing two days before we move it and kind of sleep on top of the boxes. Not only that, I'm on Vancouver Island and uh, all my other furniture is across the way in Vancouver because I used to live there and I have to move that out by a certain date as well. So come the end of April and to the mid of May, I will not be producing any shows whatsoever, though I do leave you with 3,600 shows. So I think you're OK. You've got plenty here to listen to. But I need to take that time off to move, not to be too stressed out, to get myself organized and settled so that I can get back to doing my podcasting without uh, <laughs> hair raising and God knows what else. But truly, never did I expect this, you know, and and it's really kind of funny how it came about because they put an offer on this place a few weeks ago and they just got beaten out. And then we were looking at another place and we weren't quite sure about that and waiting to see what else came on the market. And they got a phone call saying the offer fell through. The place is yours if you want it. And when I first looked at it, I thought it's got everything I want because I want one room for an office so I can close the door and I don't need to worry about the children going in there and pressing buttons because they're little and they love pressing buttons. I have a spare bedroom so either when the kids come over or friends or family come over to see me, my own bedroom, 
big kitchen, living room, dining room, open out onto a deck. I love sitting out on a deck. I've got a monkey puzzle tree opposite, trees all around me, green belt. I love sitting out there having my breakfast or my coffee and just, you know, taking in the fresh air. And uh, I really am looking forward to this. I am quite stoked about it. As I said, I would love to do a bewitched thing or a Mary Poppins thing, everything in one bag and off it goes. I'm not looking forward to the actual move itself. I'm now trying to find people who will move seniors for a cheap price because it's expensive to move. But um, I am excited about the new platform. Sad to be leaving my little Audrey. She is an absolute sweetheart and a darling. And I really do hope the next person does her justice. And um, and she has that companionship that she likes. And she's hopefully will come down and stay with me and most certainly stay in my life. You know, um, you put out to the universe what you want. And yes, I wanted a home, but what I wanted and how I wanted to feel was a sanctuary, a place I could close the doors on and I felt safe. I felt the vibration was mine, that it was, it was a home that I could settle in and feel at home in. Yes, I feel partially at home here, but I have two tiny rooms with way too much furniture in it. and. I, you know, I can't have people over. And yes, she, you know, I've had my children stay over. I've had a friend stay over and she accommodates that, but it's still <clears throat> difficult because it's not, you know, I have two rooms, but she has the rest of the apartment. So now being able to accommodate people to come and visit, to get to know people in the complex, you know, maybe have coffee room, coffee morning buddies and things like that. Maybe more interesting people to to interview on their extraordinary lives because it is a senior complex, 55 and up. And just to, you know, kind of get to know Nanaimo, I know it a little bit. Um, but now when you're living there, you can explore more and everything just becomes so much uh, more cohesive. But yes, the universe does listen. And this is one thing I've learned with the universe. Don't put out exactly what you want, although I did put out the vision of the space I wanted. Um, but put out how you want to feel in it. And as I said, I want you to feel at home, safe, a sanctuary, a place where when I went home, I felt that it embraced me and that when people come to see me, that they do feel embraced. And the universe will always deliver if you get out of the way and just allow it to do its thing. With uh, the book, uh, Forgotten Children, this was five years ago I wanted to do this book. And I had to wait until time was right. And then last year it was, okay, I'm going to do the book. Now, let's get all the people together and all the people I had on my list had moved on, uh, except for two or three of them. And so it was looking for new people. And what did the universe do? In all the interviews I was doing, I found these people that were absolutely awesome for the book. And their contribution is absolutely incredible. And what this book means about change for our children and how we need to be aware of what's going on so we can be the voice of change. And the fact that it's a fundraiser for organizations supporting children and families. I'm very proud of this book and there's more to come. Uh, it does mean that perhaps uh, the audio part of it is going to be a bit delayed. I wanted that out for the end of March, but I think just because of the move and all, all the other pressures on me, it may not happen. I'm going to try, but we'll see. Um, and come April, um, more to do, I think, again, pushing it to May when I get back into the flow of a home. We'll start with the Ask the Authors question platform. Um, all of that can wait. Although, you know, I'd love to do it in March. It's sometimes you just have to look at what's being presented. And I've been gifted this home and getting settled in this home and sorted out um, is very important so that I'm settled so I can go about doing all the next part of the work. So um, the universe always answers. The book came about with the right people. I wrote my book. Finally, and people have been nagging me for this book for years. And I finally wrote my book, Sarah's Self-Discovery to Soul Living. And I wrote that book last year and finally got it out. I'm in two other books, Dare to Live Fearlessly and Mission 262, which is coming out in May. And uh, all of this is all happening at once. And that is something that always happens to me. I ask the universe for what I need. And I leave it up to the universe and it always brings everything at once to me. So it is, oh, take the deep breath and deal with it one step at a time and make it happen. 
but thank you universe for listening to me this gives me that base that place where i feel calm and ready to then take on the next adventures as i said the audio book is going to be there um the um next book that we're going to be doing is uh, going to be coaching your self-discovery and there will be a series of coaches in there talking about your discovery uh, to life whether it be health business wealth um, mindset spirituality there'll be a number of coaches in there and then for christmas we're going to have our forgotten seniors book which is same principle podcast book addressing seniors as I am one, I fully understand how the system has let us down and lack of support and, and that we have more seniors today than we've ever had in the time of history. And we need to support them on their final years of life and thank them for the contribution that they've given us. And then we also have next year another Forgotten Children book series too. So I have a lot on my plate and having a home where I feel set, I will be working, looking after the children a couple of days of the week. So I'll work my shows around that. And um, I get to have that baby love. And, you know, my my one little son just turned three and my other little one turns one in April. And just being around my babies, you know, that love, that exuberance, that joy and being around my daughter and her husband and the family. And it's closer for my family to come to me and just pop over for a couple of days and get back on the ferry. And uh, it's just, ah, yes, thank you. Thank you, my daughter and her husband. Thank you, universe. Thank you, everybody, for all this that is happening. So, you know, folks, when we're in desperation, we cannot, you know, manifest what we want and need. We can't even put out what we need because all we're putting out is the desperation. When you surrender, that it will be when it's meant to be. And this was meant to be a year ago. A year ago, we I was looking at moving and just things didn't come together. And now this year, through the grace of my daughter and her husband and even his um, family, this has now come about. And uh, so we just have to sometimes don't put a time bracket on things. Uh, we have to surrender and allow and be patient. Keep feeding how you want to feel um, the things that you're all doing and how you envision them coming together and let the universe guide you because it certainly has me. And now is the packing time. Yikes, that is the uh, part of it. Uh, I don't have the energy and the stamina that I used to have. So this is going to be fun. And I need to find movers that can move me economically, because obviously, I don't have a lot of money. And, um, and I've got to move from two places. So um, yeah, um, every time I need a donation, folks, it's now. But um, I will continue to bring you all these illuminating people, these wonderful people that I get to interview. I will continue to bring you the books. I will continue to bring you the um, mentors uh, in the directory. I'll continue to bring you all the people that are changing people's lives. I'm just going to come to pace myself over the next couple of months so I can pack up, so I can move, so I can get myself rooted, so I can embrace the next part of the journey. So. I wish everybody well. I again am truly blessed and thank my daughter and her husband so much for what they have done here. They have given me the respect and the value to have a home to live my years out in. And so until next time, folks, one very blessed woman, very happy woman to all of you. Just let the universe know how you want to feel, not the fear, not the doubt, how you want to feel how you want to feel in kind of what type of space or what kind of thing that you are needing, not from anxiety, not from desperation, but from trust, from belief, from love, from a vision that is so very powerful. And you'll never know what can come to be about it. So until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. There are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. Just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show.